Hi, George here, and today I'll be comparing Photoshop Elements 2024 to Adobe Photoshop 2024. Now, a lot of times when you see videos like this, people will be talking about the similarities between the two programs, and there are a lot of similarities. We'll cover some of that a little later in this video, but I think the real question is which program is better for you, and the best way is by looking at the differences between the programs, not the similarities. The main reason people choose Photoshop Elements over Photoshop is price. And there's a big difference on that. Let's go ahead and compare the prices of these two and where you'll find that. So I'll bring up the adobe.com website. Here we go on the main page. And you see right off the bat, they're talking about Photoshop right here and Photoshop over there elsewhere. And that's because that is their main program. They make most of their money from Photoshop and related programs. They make a small amount from Photoshop Elements, but nothing compared to Photoshop. So they're pushing Photoshop over Elements. So on the site, anywhere you go, you'll be looking at and seeing Photoshop here, Photoshop is over there. You'll see Photoshop every place. But to find Photoshop elements, you have to scroll clear down at the bottom of the screen, down here into the menu, bottom menu, and right there it says Elements Family. That's the only link from the home page into the Elements section. Let's now take a look at the price. I'll bring up the Elements Family in here. And over here it says $79.99. That's not exactly accurate. Let me show you why. If we scroll down just a little bit, here you go, $99.99. So it's a little bit misleading right there. This is the price if you're buying Photoshop Elements brand new, you haven't purchased it before. That $79.99 price, that is the upgrade price if you already own an earlier version of Photoshop Elements. Now to find that, you're gonna have to go in and dig a little bit. So I'll come down here and we'll click on Photoshop Elements 2024 right there. Again, here's that same price, again, the $99.99. And hiding right here, real small text, there's the upgrade price for $79.99. So that's the cheapest that you can get Photoshop Elements right now. Let's now take a look at Adobe Photoshop. I'll go back to the home page up here. And then from the home page, we'll go into Creativity and Design and Photographers right there. And if you scroll down here, you'll see free trials for Lightroom, free trials for Photoshop. But we'll go right here to the Buy Now button. And in here they have Photography. This is their Photography Package. Comes with Lightroom and Photoshop and one terabyte of storage space online. Now this isn't the cheapest price. This is $19.99. That's what they want you to do. But you can come down here for a compare photography plans. And in here, there's the cheapest possible price. That's $9.99 a month. And it gives you far less online storage. If you don't need online storage, then this is the least expensive that you can get. So we'll go ahead and we'll compare these two. This one then, approximately we'll say $10 a month. So $120 per year for Photoshop and Lightroom. It's actually a very good price. If you are getting Photoshop Elements, then your yearly price is $80. So it's about 50% more for Photoshop and Lightroom than for Photoshop Elements. Now a big difference, and this is a very big difference, is that with Photoshop, you always have the latest version. This is a subscription and they update the program two or three times a year, you always have the latest version. If you purchase Photoshop Elements instead, we'll go back and take a fast look at that, and that's right here. If you purchase Photoshop Elements, you're only purchasing that one version. You're not getting any upgrades. So if you want to upgrade, you'll have to buy again. But still, we're looking at 120 a year for Photoshop with upgrades, and we're looking at about 80 a year for Photoshop Elements with upgrades. So again, much, much cheaper. Let's now switch back over to the programs and take a look at the similarities. One of the real benefits of Photoshop Elements is its simplicity. It's fairly easy to learn. And I just made a brand new tool that makes it real super easy to learn this program. But I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. At the top up here, this is Photoshop Elements. And then behind here is Adobe Photoshop. And the same picture open up in both. So you can see that that's looking the same, so color-wise it looks just fine. Now, the new version here of Elements 2024 has two different basic colorations for the interface, two UI looks. This is the light look, there's also a dark look, so Photoshop over here is in a dark look. Let's switch this over to the dark and see how close the two are now. Come down to Edit Preferences, General, and it's right here. Light mode, dark mode, choose OK. Now I need to close this down and reopen it so that we can then see that mode. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that real fast here off camera. And here we go, there is the Photoshop Elements new dark mode. And as you can see, it's very similar to Photoshop's dark mode. I can get it even closer if I adjust the Photoshop. 
but they're very similar now. The icons look similar, they're in the same place. This is our tools panel over here in Photoshop. Here's the tools panel in Elements. One little difference, Elements has them organized by sections with section names, just a little bit easier. Right hand side in Photoshop, I have our panels. There's your layers, channels, paths. Up here's your properties, adjustments, and libraries. Notice how the panels are tabs. And we have multiple panels open at one time on the right hand side. More panels hiding underneath all this stuff in here. One little thing to look out for, at the bottom down here, we have our layer mask, folders, and so forth. Trash can this all down here. In elements, those things are at the top instead of the bottom. That's why in some of my videos, you'll see me go to the wrong side because I'll be using one program all day and then I'll do a video on the other program and I'll just automatically go to the wrong end. So if you see that kind of happening sometimes in my videos, that's why they just have this in two different places, top in one, bottom in the other. Now in Photoshop Elements, we only have just the one panel showing on the right-hand side and additional panels as buttons across the bottom or in the window menu in here. But you can make this even more like Photoshop if you want to. And it's down here, this little arrow right there. Click on that, choose custom workspace, and all of a sudden all the buttons go away down here and they become tabs up here. And I can then just go through the tabs. This is much easier to use this way and it's a really nice way to work. And I recommend anybody using Photoshop Elements to go ahead and do it this way. It's just faster. Also, you can show multiple panels over here. Just grab a tab, pull it down. It then becomes a floating window and you can position that where you want, basically giving you overlapping or multiple panels available on the right hand side. So much more like Photoshop in that sense. I'll just put this back up here again. There we go. You can rearrange these and all kinds of fun stuff. So in elements, you can make it much more like Photoshop if you want to. Okay, I'll go ahead and switch this back over to the light mode, which is kind of the standard mode for elements and also easier for us to see which one I'm talking about here in this video. Preferences, general, and go back to light mode, choose okay. I'll close it down and reopen it. Okay, we're back in light mode again. As I mentioned previously, I have a great new tool which makes learning how to use Photoshop Elements a breeze. Let me quickly take you over and show you that. Here we go, it's my new HTG Photo Coach for Adobe Photoshop Elements. And this is a text-based tool that answers all of your questions about Photoshop Elements. Let's say you wanted to find out about what's new here in version 2024. I'll just type in 2024. And then this gives me a whole list of articles all about what's new here in 2024. You can even show all results. And here we go. See, I wanted to find out more about those quick actions. Click on that. And it brings up that article about quick actions, including step-by-step -step how to use that. Let's do a different search in here, 2024. And we'll show all results on that. And let's take a look at a list of everything new here in 2024 right here. Click on this article. And here's a list of every new feature inside of 2024. So as you can see, it makes it super, super easy to use along with video training to answer all those questions. They have just a few more questions about that the video doesn't answer. This is the way to go on that. This will answer all of those additional questions for you very quickly, very easily. If you want to find out more about this new training tool, I have included a link for this in the description. Just go down there, click on that link, and it'll take you right to a video all about how this new program works. Okay, let's get back and take a look at our comparisons again of Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Let's compare a couple of other features. One standard feature to use is using layer styles right here. Now I can't do a layer style on the background layer, so I'm just gonna duplicate this, right click and duplicate, choose okay, and then layer, layer style, style settings. Here's the style settings dialog box for Photoshop Elements. We have drop shadow, glow, bevel, and stroke. You can expand these out and get a few more controls in here for adjusting those. You can get more than this if you bring up that styles right here. Let's cancel that. And all of these are pre-made styles, which you can then apply. And this gives you much more capability here. It's a lot wider range of styles than you have in that one styles dialog box. And once you have applied a style, you can go up here to the layer menu, layer style, style settings, and then control that style from the standard style settings dialog box. So that's not too bad. There's a wide range here. Most anything you would normally use is available here. Let's switch over to Photoshop quickly and take a look at the same thing. I'll make a duplicate layer. Same trick, right click and duplicate layer. No difference there. Go up to layer, layer style. Again, same thing. A lot more showing here. I can go directly to a specific style if I wanted to. Let's just take a look at drop shadow. And this brings up 
the Photoshop layer styles dialog box. And you notice how many more controls we have in here. Just a huge number of controls. I, I would say that this is about 100 times more powerful than the Photoshop Elements version. So if you like using layer styles, if they're important to you, maybe Photoshop is a better choice. And all of these have just multiple controls on that. Here's our stroke section, multiple controls. Here's inner glow right there. Lots of availability. You can also stack these very easily. Okay, back over to Photoshop Elements again. And back to our Layers panel right here on the right-hand side. Let's take a look at our Type Controls. To add text onto a picture, you go over to the Type tool right there. Click into your text someplace here. And in Photoshop Elements 2024, it gives you some placeholder text. There it is. You can then adjust that. Let's change this to a white color. Let's change our size down to 72. So we have our controls right down below here. Here's our type style, our typeface, size, letting, tracking, pretty much what you'd use most of the time available right down here in the options panel. And again, very easy to use with this. Let's go over to Photoshop and do the exact same thing. There's the type tool. Use a horizontal type, come down here, click into here. It gives us that same little sample text. In this case, the options aren't at the bottom, they're at the top. Pretty much the same thing, it's just a little bit tighter in here. It doesn't take up as much space in your work area. But the same basic general options are available. Do some fancy, there we go. A main difference though is that Photoshop has a type menu with a lot of controls in here for working with type. So again, Photoshop is much more professional and if you need really accurate control of your type, then you would need to be using Photoshop. Now, although Photoshop is a professional level program and it can do a lot of things that Photoshop Elements cannot do, there are some things that Photoshop Elements can do that Photoshop can't. And those are tools that are designed to give you a lot of creative power without forcing you to learn how to become a professional photo editor. At the top, we have three modes. You can see that Photoshop is always in advanced mode. Photoshop Elements has a quick mode, one touch buttons over here to quickly come in and make changes. Just roll over this for different views. Exposure adjustments in here. Color adjustments. A lot that's just one click and it's all set for you. It saves a lot of time. There's also the brand new quick actions section in here. Smart fix color correction. Add blue sky, smooth skin. A lot of things that can be done in just one click. Which would take a bit of work over in Photoshop. And then we have the guided edits. And these are little techniques that Photoshop Elements helps you work through. So it guides you along in the process of doing these kind of fancier edits. We have basics, color, black and white, fun edits, special edits, and photo merge in here. Again, some of these things you will find available over in Photoshop if you know where to look, but they're kind of hidden. Like the panorama is available over in Photoshop but it's really easy to find here and these do walk you through the whole process. So it doesn't take as much knowledge to use Photoshop Elements. You don't have to become a professional to use this program. And that's one of those things I like most about Photoshop Elements is that it's easy to use. It's great for somebody who just wants to use it on occasion to do some little bit of photo editing, maybe working on a scrapbook or genealogy or things for family or cards, things like that. It's a great program for that. It does have some limitations though. And the main limitation we can see over here under image, come down to mode, and that's the color modes available. We have RGB color, that's your red, green, and blue. This is your standard color format for working for images on the web. And it's just eight bits per channel. Those are your options. You can go down to index color. This is the same thing as a GIF graphic or grayscale or straight bitmap, just straight black and white. Now, because Photoshop Elements is kind of aimed at digital images, I use this all the time and I do all of my YouTube thumbnails inside of Photoshop Elements. It's just very fast at doing things like that. It's a great program for that. Now the difference over here in Photoshop, same thing, image modes at the top this time. There's our RGB color and you can see a lot more available in here, including CMYK color. This is the main reason why I keep Photoshop around is that I do some design work for print. I've done some t-shirt designs, some mug designs, things like that. And those have to be designed for CMYK printing. So this gives me CMYK color mode much better. You also have 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits in your channels. So if you're doing high end photo editing, you want to have these higher bit levels. And Elements just cannot handle those. So once again, if you're looking at professional level work, then Photoshop is the one to choose. If you're looking at less professional, more amateur or more hobbyist, 
then I think Photoshop Elements is a great way to go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, don't forget to take a look at my new training tool for Photoshop Elements. And the link for that is right down there in the description.